So before we get started, I need to get this out of the way. This game actually took me nine days from the start to the end to make, but because I have a toddler, two of those days I didn't do anything with the game. Anyhow, let's get into the devlog. So I had seven days off from work, just for vacation, and I figured it was a good amount of time to get something done. The game I last released, Asteroid Dig Mobile, hasn't exactly been selling very well, and I'm pretty sure it's because it's a premium game. I uh, put it up for cash, and you can buy the game outright, and then you have it. I personally think that's the better model to go with for the consumer, but a lot of people commented that they would play my game if it were free, which makes sense. So I wanted to get something out there quick and easy that uh, I could put ads on to see how that would do. And so I started making this game, Galaxy Bash which is the name we ended up calling it based on some feedback from the Discord I got. So to begin with the controls, I wanted something really simple. I was talking about juice with some friends on the Discord, and essentially in an attempt to make like an example version of how juice should feel in a game, I ended up making these controls. Uh, it's very, they're very basic, it's just left, right, up, down. You run into a wall and you make a big bash, and that's all there was with that. Then I needed a theme for the game, and it just seemed appropriate to go with picking up stars. So I had to add stars to the game and make it satisfying to pick them up. And the easiest way to do that that I know of is to give them an increasing pitch. So as you're picking up more and more and more of them, the pitch goes up and up and up and you get that like rewarding sense of progression in the sound itself. And I did that just by increasing the pitch every time you ran into a new star and resetting that counter whenever you hit the side of a wall. Then back to juice, I added in some effects to make it more visually appealing. So the stars rotate, particle effects spawn whenever you hit the stars, and you hit the wall with this nice, nice satisfying thud. Please don't make fun of me for using a calculator to divide an even number by two. I did go to engineering school. It was a while ago, okay? <laughs> That's my only excuse, it was a while ago. Since I decided to go with um, picking up stars, I thought it was appropriate to make a space game. So I decided to make the game about picking up stars as a black hole, sucking them in. And that was pretty straightforward, I just went into GIMP and created a swirl effect by using one of the, um, one of the filters. And then in-game I just added a rotation effect to the animation, and that way when you're sitting idly, the whole thing rotates so you kind of get that spinning effect. Art just is not my forte, I'm actually considering starting to use pre-made assets. Realistically, it's just I'm going to end up making a better game if I use somebody else's artwork. My art will never be on, well, it would take a long time for my art to get to that level. So I gave up my best shot in this game, and it turned out like you see on the screen there now. I tried to make everything animated so that way nothing is kind of static and, and boring to look at. So even in the menu I tried to give the stars that you see there, uh, so when you go to highlight things, th they pop up and th they're spinning just so there's more motion on the screen, it's not boring to look at. This fade effect is one that I used in Atomic Trail, where when you click to change to the next scene, the whole screen goes black all at one time, so it kind of it fades all uniformly black, and then it fades back again to the color of the next scene. It's a transition that works in some cases. I eventually changed that out for another one later, but it, it, it did the job for the time being. I wanted the game to give you rewards as you played it, so people had an incentive to come back and, and they felt rewarded for their time. And so I decided to make unlockable colors for the stars, which actually turned out really well. Each different star gives you a completely different color to play with, and the whole screen, since the particles and the stars themselves all use the same color, it's a very different look every time you switch colors. Then I wanted to add a scoring system to the game, because again, you want the players to feel like they have some sort of challenge. And since I didn't want it to be too difficult that if you failed the mission or failed the level, um, you just failed. So instead of that, I made it so that you had a scoring system, and the more stars you scored based on how long it took you to finish the level, the more would go back towards those unlockable colors back at the beginning in the main menu. So I drew the stars white so that way it was easy to tint the colors in engine, and that just made life a lot easier for me. Speaking of engine, if you don't know what, which engine I'm using by now, um, I'm using GDevelop. It's a, uh, I suppose visual scripting is a good way to say it, but it's a codeless engine, more or less. I have the option of going in and fiddling with JavaScript, but otherwise it's all done with events, with actions and conditions. Which works for me because I am not, I'm not good at coding. Like, not at all. I spent like, 
probably five hours just trying to find a typo one time, and I, I just, it's, it's not for me. Then I had to get some sound effects into the game to give it more of a punch. The ones I put in there were temporary ones that I have stashed away for prototyping purposes. So to make new sound effects, I use SFXR, got it right that time, and it's a really simple tool. If you haven't tried it before, you, you should definitely try it. You literally just cl click randomize or one of the select tabs, and it'll give you a random sound, and you just keep doing that until you get one that, that fits your purpose. And of course I made all new music for the game. I use Beatbox and BandLab. This was made in Beatbox. It sounds like this. It does the trick, but it's not exactly happy music. But it sounds kind of spacey. So up to this point I was using WASD to uh, control the character. But since it's going to be a mobile game with ads, I need to put in um, touch controls. And since GDevelop doesn't naturally recognize swipes, I created my own swipe system. So basically when you click anywhere on the screen, it brings up the control menu. Uh, when that your finger collides with a direction, it will think it's um, the same as my WASD. So then you take your finger off again and it's gone. So it's essentially swipe, but you can also put, hold your finger down on it to just have a control system in one spot. So now that I had the mechanics down, I needed to start adding in things like finishing screens, transitional buttons, and things like that. Once I got to this point and I was starting to go from one level to the next, I wanted to solidify what I was going to use for a fade. Acknowledging that the one that I was using just didn't make any sense for the style of game, like it just didn't look right, I decided to do what I did for my last mobile game, Asteroid Dig, which is basically just an image across the screen, so when the level starts, it's covering the screen and then from the beginning it moves over to the left and kind of swipes away from the screen, and then when you want to transition to the next scene, it comes back again. So it kind of swipes away and swipes back. I think this looks really good for arcadey fun games. Once I got level 1 to 10 done, I decided it was about time to uh, get some people playing the game to test and see if, if it feels okay to play. Because it's very easy to make something that's just not fun. Because you're so close to it, it's hard to acknowledge things that are wrong with your game. Everything was fine. The, the controls were good, people were okay with everything else. Um, it looked a bit janky, but that, it was a prototype, so they, everyone got over it. These were game devs, they were used to seeing janky prototypes. But one of them, of course being game devs, went into my game files and uh, looked at something a little bit odd. Everything was like 20 to maybe 100 kilobytes, and then they found this sound file, the music file I was using, which was a WAV file, um, that was 70,000 kilobytes, basically quadrupling the amount of uh, space my game took up, and they all laughed at me because I was fervently defending the fact that the sound needed to be the highest quality possible. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, so I broke out my, uh, my headphones and Audacity and they were sending me different file versions and different types, uh, converting it to lower quality versions to try to get something that sounded good but was also a much smaller file size. And then my eyes were opened up to the OGG file type, which I don't understand how it works exactly. Somebody told me that it's basically witchcraft. And I accept that. The 70,000 kilobyte WAV file sounds literally exactly like a 6 kilobyte OGG file. I don't understand it. It makes no sense. Everything else, uh, MP3s, um, whatever other versions we were using, everything else reducing the quality, you could very clearly hear it. It sounded mute and flat. But for some reason, this one sounded exactly the same as the 70,000 kilobyte file. So, accepting witchcraft exists. I moved on to the next set of levels. I decided that every 10 levels uh, where there would be an ad, I would add a new mechanic. So when they finished the ad, they came back and there'd be a new mechanic, so it's kind of rewarding them for sticking around. And this one was very simple, it was basically a teleporter. Right, you have a top-down game like this, being able to teleport back and forth between spaces in the round is kind of par for the course. So since the character was a black hole, I made white holes. I don't know if they exist, but I made white holes. That's a joke in there somewhere. Essentially, it was just set up so that when the character runs into these white holes, they get their position swapped to the next one, and then they retain all their forces. Which actually made for some really cool level designs. Um, you're probably seeing them now. Once I finished 11 through 20, since I had the base mechanics down and I got the feedback that I was expecting to get last time, I just moved on to the next set of levels. 
So like 11 to 20, I needed a new mechanic for 21 to 30. And this time I created the rotating aim hole. <laughs> I'm creative. I know I am. Thank you. So using the rotating aim hole, um, essentially it just directs the black hole player model to whichever direction it's facing at the time. And again, just like the white hole, this created a whole bunch of pretty decent levels. Uh, level 30 I think is pretty great because it has six of these rotating aim holes. And I think it's pretty good. This is actually the first game I've made that my wife has played through, by the way. So, bravo to me. <laughs> I've made something that she was actually able to sit through and play. I made something palatable. <laughs> Yay, me! At this point I had 30 levels, and I had the transition set up for where the ads were going to be, so I decided to start adding ads. Thankfully with GDevelop this is really simple. It's literally just a matter of um, creating a separate scene and loading the ad. That was it. Um, I had to create a Google ad account, and then from there it was literally just a matter of copying my game's ID into the Google ad account, and then vice versa, copying my Google ad account information into the game. And that was it. I honestly thought I was going to spend the day just doing that, but it was as easy as that. Then I started the fun task of, like, just, just so much fun, task of a lot of little tiny tedious things to make the game fit together. I mean, put all the levels together into a cohesive game. So when, whenever I do this sort of thing, I, I get to the tedious part of, of making games, I just throw on some music and zone out and just do it. Once I had the game in this next playable state, I sent it off for some playtesting, and while they were playtesting it, I set up the locking mechanism so that you can't use a color unless you have that amount of stars earned in the game. And when the feedback came back, it was basically all great. Like, they, people just loved it. They uh, tore my art style to shreds. Like, just tore that a new one. But the game itself was fun. So, that's all I needed. I wrote down all the feedback and stored it away for now to get back to later, and kept moving ahead with things I needed to do to get the game out and sold. And at this point, the only things that were left were the options menu, setting up the transitions again to make sure all the scenes are fading properly, and then I had to create the marketing images, the store icon, and gameplay images, and come up with the description. Then I just had to go to my Google Play developer account and click on Create App. And that was it. This game was made in seven days. It only has 30 levels, and if Google has approved the game by the time this video comes out, then you can play it. If they haven't, then you can't play it. We'll see. Either way, there will be a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this devlog, Consider doing all that YouTube stuff, liking, subscribing, commenting, you know, those things. And if you wanted to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside. It's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk game dev. And if you choose to click on that, then I'll see you there.